Yeah, responsing video to uh, this guy. Well, this guy. Um, <laughs> nihilism or transcendence, a reply to amend them. So apparently he has a blog post that uh, goes into more detail, or maybe it's more worthwhile. We'll check that out later. Uh, so anyway, we're five minutes in, and I don't know what the fuck he said. Um, thanks for the reply. <laughs> yeah, except he took five minutes to say that. And so now he's complaining about the response style again. Like, don't play my video and respond to it because that somehow doesn't make sense to people when, to me, that's the only way you can do this right. Um, because you have to identify where your paraphrases are crap, okay? Your understanding of life on Earth is shit. That's basically my opinion, okay? Life on Earth is not that complicated. We're evolved machines that compete for an insanely inane purpose, which is replicating a molecule. And that's all it is. Replicating a molecule. Acquire eccentric tools to beat the shit out of each other on a little round ball hurling through space so you can see you, your toolkit is the best toolkit. whoop de fucking goddamn do That's the natural function. That's what's happening here. There is no God. There is no magic. There is no anything. And one of the tools we have is this consciousness thing. So that's number two. Number two, consciousness. And consciousness does two things. It feels good and it feels bad. Is this too complicated for you? And the point is, is you don't make the consciousness thing through any mechanism that could be called fair in how it's how it's how you a proportion or you know deserve and fairness have nothing to do with how the pain and pleasure is disposed among the sentience and you don't get the consent of the players in the stupid game so those are two really huge flaws in your fucking gameplay and this whole idiotic idea that I'm supposed to live 18 years and then kill myself is idiotic. You're never going to give adolescents the right to kill themselves. So why are you talking? Why should I have to even go through my circumcision? Why should I have to spend 10 minutes with you fucking scumbags? All right? By your authority. You say it's worth playing and so you'll make victim. Fuck you. You don't have a right to do that. Is that too complicated for you to answer? Where do you derive the right except for your arrogant optimism? Where else do you get the right? Oh, that's right. You don't have it from anywhere else except you're an arrogant optimist. So anyway, we don't need an hour to say that. We don't need a half hour to paraphrase that. So anyway... So I'll play another five minutes and take notes and respond. Fuck. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Alright, another five minutes. So five minutes on whining about responding sentence by sentence, idea by idea, concept by concept. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, again, I please do it all you want to my videos I would appreciate I think they're much more interesting videos I think they're much more relevant because you have to actually answer what somebody is saying rather than your lies about what they said like you just accused me of of uh, thinking you believed in God I never said you believed in God I was basically implying that you're one of these pantheist poofters who um, illogically you know you kill God like Nietzsche and then you make nature God you decide that Mother Nature is really God. And that's all you do. You just change the default position from some thinking thing that created the world, some crazy psychotic sky daddy, to crazy psychotic natural forces and say they're in control. We can't violate nature. Yeah, so it's their God. That was the clear implication. So anyway, he has a whole list of these complaints, but it's basically red herrings, he calls it, missed context, I, I defy you to find the missed context. You're the one making the video with the accusations, I countered your accusations, not that complicated. And you start the first half of your video, you spent 30 minutes paraphrasing a position that really is pretty simple, okay? A good game is made out of fairness and consent 
and the nature game is made out of consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, and addiction. Not too complicated. Refute some of that or shut the fuck up. That's my premises. They're rock solid. All my logic based on them is rock solid and it's only your magical thinking or some kind of presumption of authority in the natural system that could possibly come up with a rational counter-argument. There is no rational counter-argument. Life is insanely messy. It creates victims. You don't play with it. It's just that simple. So anyway, uh, slog. He called it slog and unwatchable. Well, look at look, pal. <laughs> okay, I I found I find your videos incredibly tedious, incredibly annoying, gnawing, like little cockroaches chewing at my brain. Okay, so yeah, that can be a subjective impression. I don't like your style. How's that? You don't have to like my style, but I think this critique is bullshit. I think a fair fight means you deal with everything the motherfucker said, not your interpretation of it, not your perversion of it, not your twisting of it, not your bending of it. Dealing with people's actual quotes rather than your fucking paraphrases. All right, And I find that a lot more offensive and red herring producing. When people paraphrase other people's content, I think that's crossing... Um, fairness lines and they're going to get you red herrings all over the fucking place. So screw that crap argument. So let's hear a little bit of this shit just for the fun of it. Using this method you're encouraged to take cheap shots because you can go back and forth. You, you just you, you can take cheap shots at these isolated slivers of sentences, these fragments. Yeah, yeah, and I'm vulnerable to the same thing. So if I make a mistake, people call me on it. Sometimes I say something the wrong way, and I get called on it. I'm not free. I'm not. I'm not. Um, you know, immune. I'm not claiming immunity. So I can be just as easily shanghaied on a, a misphrase somewhere. But that's sort of your obligation, isn't it? That's what we do. That's what happens in an argument. The fucking point is that somebody has every liberty to watch your entire video. It was linked in the description. If they want to hear you saying it, you're, said, I'm, you're expecting me. His expectation is that I watch his whole hour-long video, and then I think about it for a while, and then I play it again to respond to it. Well, fuck you. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Uh, like I said, I find it tedious the first time around. I'm not doing it twice. I'll do it when I watch me respond to it. That's when I'll hear your video again. So anyway, another five minutes. Yeah, right, I'm back again. Um, yeah, well, I'll paraphrase first. Um, so, so yeah, he's just writing some more about this method um, causes anger and this and that. No, it doesn't cause any of that stuff. It's the byproduct of the subject. You're criminals, in my opinion. You're malicious, arrogant assholes doing damage to sentient creatures, torturing them for no good reason just because you're arrogant assholes. I should be upset about that. Um, <laughs> you know, lose sight of the forest through the trees, which I found hilarious. What forest, asshole? Behind, besides your optimistic, phantasmagorical, silly notions that the human race is going to somehow grow some sort of dignity and walk around in you know little white dresses and have little lovey-dovey feelings towards everybody and everything's going to the lions are going to lie down with the lambs or something whatever your freaking fantasy is that has nothing to do with reality in any sense no practical rational description of your evolution how you get from here where the human race is now shock and awe to your fantasy world give me a description of how that's done i've never seen a science fiction movie that could do it rationally or within without committing preposterous plot flaws. So let me hear your story of how it happens, fuckhead. Um, I didn't lose your forest. Your forest is a pile of fucking phantasmagorical, as I think I described it, leprechaun gold. All right, that's what it is. I identified it, I talked about it, I explained why it's ludicrous nonsense. All right, so I didn't lose your fucking forest. Your forest is a pile of fucking twinkie goo. Um, all right, um, not a something video. Pwn, hey, a pwn, you accused me of making a ponage video. You really don't know what one of those looks like, do you? Um, now that has like the word pedophile in it and other kinds of, you know, voices and all kinds of interesting stuff. 
Um, look, I started off the video, I played your video, I didn't know who the fuck you are, as you point out, I didn't know anything about you, I played your video, and until you got really assholery, that's when I got assholery, okay, and I just gave you what you deserved at the end, so yeah, it sort of became a little pony at the end, but that's only because you were saying shit, leprechaun gold, that is just so stupid, and so ignorant, and so obnoxious, and so assholery, that I can't do anything else, and right now, okay, so right now he's right at the the real deal. So so he's saying his first video was about pessimism and how he thinks in theory that's not correct, <laughs> you know, uh, that we have good reason to be optimistic, um, apparently. Um, and that there's some, you know, like I said, the core structure of life on Earth is somehow a, a, a workable core. The core. And it's, you know, I've made the arguments, or I won't remake those arguments, but no, the core is fundamentally flawed. It's made out of addiction. It's made out of creating needs that don't need to exist, as I pointed out. Um, and it's intractable. You're not going to come up with any solution or cure for the disease. Uh, it's broken nonsense. It's make a mess and then have fun cleaning up half the mess and then leaving half the mess. Yeah. It's not complicated, logically. And so here he's saying... Um, that this argument that he has a right to create victims, um, there's no, but nobody can complain about that. Um, procreation is not in any way an intrusive and impositional act, and no one could complain victimhood by being born. And he doesn't think anyone even has the right to raise an objection, let alone to have that objection sustained, which obviously I find just grotesquely obnoxious. How dare you tell me what I should, how, how I should be impressed by life. You fuck. Talk about this. Um, and then, so, so point, let's talk about consent first. Um, who is in Mendham to, to, to talk about consent? I mean, he's a determinist. So the point about consent is irrelevant. There's no choice in anything. So, well, it's, that's idiotic. So, yeah, so what, what can I say, okay? Determinism has absolutely nothing to do with the difference between an intelligent decision and a stupid decision. Those things still exist, all right? And people have a right uh, to exercise their intelligence. They have a right to exercise some sort of, with some sort of foreknowledge, okay? So obviously you could sell me a car and you could lie about the condition of the car, correct? Regardless of determinism, it has nothing to do with it. You could lie about the car's condition. And that deception will change my rational behavior. What I do rationally is dependent on the information I have. And if I'm not given correct information, I can't make a correct decision. So now the decision isn't mine. You are making the decision. You're taking away from me the right to make an informed decision by lying. You can't understand that concept. Determinism has nothing to do with what is right and what is wrong. It has nothing to do with the fact that there is still stupid behavior and smart behavior. So, you're, you know, this argument is just absolute nonsense. Determinism does not exempt you from being called what you are, a monster or a menace. If somebody has 10 kids and they have a genetic disorder that guarantees the kid will die at 6 years old, everyone on earth has a right to say, that's stupid. Okay? Regardless of determinism, they have a right to define it as what it is. Stupid, malicious, evil, nasty, cruddy, shitty behavior. And that's all I'm saying. I'm saying your behavior is stupid, ignorant, cruddy, malicious, sadistic, and it sucks. Yeah, that's the definition of your existence now because of that. You're an advocate for suck behavior. So you're in a category. I've put you in the category. All right? Now, where have I broken determinism by doing that? Oh, that's right. Absolutely nowhere. I've drawn a logical conclusion based on logical, um, uh, acquired, um, s reasonable evidence. And uh, there's been no violation of logic or determinism. Fuck you. Stupid argument. So I'd be back. This ought to be good. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't believe in consent. Uh, he thinks determinism eliminates the, the, the right of consent. Amazing. Am amazing. You have to... The, the part of the determinism is writing the contract. You can't understand that? Alright, uh, 
Yeah, he's going to move on to fairness, so I guess we'll finish consent. So he says, um, because I'm a determinist, I cannot use the word consent, and I can't use the word choice, <laughs> which I think is just idiotic. It has nothing to do with uh, the fact that we all have wills, okay? The argument is about whether there's anything free. The determinist says, no, your will isn't free. It's determined, okay, by how you access knowledge and how much knowledge you access and how you process that knowledge through your life experience and that will determine your will or your disposition or your sensibilities and that there are sensibilities that are more uh, qualified, respectable. Uh, the more miles you've flown a plane, the more pay you'll get as a pilot often because with hours comes experience, comes knowledge, comes wisdom, comes ability to deal with a problem. Um, this, these are just facts of life, okay? So the fact is that, you're, that there's nothing, there's no, there's no obligation to eliminate the word um, that decisions are made by brains. Yes, they're not true free choices. And, and I would oblige you if you're going to counter with some other thing existing, whether you're saying that you're also a determinist, I can't be clear or sure of, but I'd just like to know what this free thing would be. What would a free will come from? What force would be making the decision besides determinism? So I don't see any difference here. And what you're really saying in the, in the end, what we're arguing about is that if there was no, so let's say, just say there is no choice and there's no, the notion of consent is iffy. Um, the bottom line is that there's still going to be a set of will notions that will decide behavior, okay? You're saying that your optimism will notions should somehow override people that are pessimistic. You're basically saying that in the battle between two ideas of fail-safe and reckless, stupid, moronic risk, that somehow fail-safe should lose. And I'm saying that, no, all the evidence is on the fail-safe side, and Benatar writes about that evidence. Um, and you'll have no hope of making a rational argument in defense of reckless risk. It has absolutely no potential of returning anything of real value, and you're just wasting and committing a crime against the victims that will pay for it, the things you will force into existence, torture for no good reason, because you're an idiot. And you are, in fact, an idiot. I mean, you use words like nature is divine, and people are supposed to take you seriously uh, in calling yourself an atheist. Why would you say nature is divine? That's idiotic. Uh, if you're an atheist, um, using this whole concept of undeadness, why would you play with a word like that? It has all these mystical notions. There's no such thing as undead. You're either alive or you're dead. It's not, there's no undeadness. Um, all right, so then the free will thing I did, uh, there'll be something will decide behavior. That's the argument here. Who should drive the bus? The idiot or the rationally based sensible argument person? Yeah, and I'm, I'm voting for the, the person who's thought about it and hasn't been duped by nature and biology and psychology and hormones. Yeah, that's what I'm voting for. Um, and uh, let's see, who should, um, yeah, right, so I did that part. Um, so, yeah, the, there's no this free ability. Um, now he's arguing that um, an, an issue of consent is, is that oh, you give implicit consent by not killing yourself. So obviously we can't kill ourselves in the womb. We can't kill ourselves until we acquire the knowledge that makes us capable of realizing we've, we're, being, we're in slavery, right? How, how long does it take, a, a, like say, a, slave, a child born into slavery? It probably took them a little while to really quite understand what the fuck happened. You know, that their ancestors were kidnapped and they've been forced into a regime that has nothing to do with anything meritorious whatsoever except that one set of guys had guns and the others didn't. Um, you know, and they threw the other people in chains and once they had them by the balls, once they had a gun to their wife's head, um, they could coerce behavior out of them. Um, yeah, it takes a little time to figure out what's happened to you on, on Earth. Um, and then by the time you do find out, you might be caught up in a little bit too. You might have some strings and entanglements to people and killing yourself ain't so easy. Um, and then that doesn't even count for the biological problem, which is there's not, this isn't a free ability to kill yourself. You have to go through the process of death to get out of here. There's not an open door that just says out, exit. You just walk through it, no harm, no foul. No, you walk through that door, you're going to get tased. Okay, you're going to get tased, fucker. You're going to have to go through an experience that is 
intrinsically and fundamentally by every description that may not be pleasant, especially if things don't go right, especially if you have to do it illegally. Um, and so this is just idiotic to tell, to, to tell me that I've given placid consent to, to do these fucking experience, experiments because I'm a rat sitting here arguing against you doing your experiences, Mangala. Fuck you. I'm here to fight you in the first place, all right, because I'm not, I'm not going to be much of a warrior if I'm dead. I mean, in the second place, you faggots don't have the balls to give me the goddamn right. Okay, so why don't you first fix the law before you tell people they should be exercising a law that doesn't exist, which is the right to die with dignity. That law doesn't exist, and until it does exist, fuck you scumbag for telling people they should be exercising a right they don't have. Fuck you. Have the courage in your civilization, all right, to make, to make suicide truly legal and make it legal for maybe even 16-year-olds, all right, show some real balls and advocate for that aggressively, and then you can make your, maybe you could make a, a little bit better, a little bit better of an argument, all right, but until then, you're a weasel uh, to pull that card, a fucking weasel. Fuck you for that. Fuck you. All right, we're at about the 20 minute, you know, 22 something minute mark, and you should, you know, check out the 20 minute mark or so, because I really want to respond to that crap line by line, because it's just all this phantasmagorical leprechaun gold bullshit. Um, these new levels that nature's evolving, and um, you know, we're transcending being animals, and we've done all this magnificent stuff, and we're just wow, we're so on the right road. It's just a joke. Um, <clears throat> we can't even transcend the simplest things. We can't trans <laughs> transcend bigotries and all the rest of this stuff. And the only thing I'm asking you to do is exactly the same thing, though. I'm saying, look, the transcendence is you transcend a stupid paradigm. You, you transcend consumption, reproduction, even if you got rid of the cannibalism and addiction. All right? You're still stuck with nothing. All right? You create an addict. For what purpose? Why do you create addicts to something? Something that needs something so you can satisfy its need. That's not sensible. You're just acting out of your own. Transcend your human, your earthling bigotry and recognize that you don't miss the Martians. And you don't miss them for a good reason. They have no use. Okay? The Venetians. No use. The only way you could possibly miss them is if they produced some kind of, they excreted some bee honey out of their asses and you wanted to lick it up. Uh, that's the only way you could miss. You'd miss the good honey from Venetians. You'd have to need it. You'd have to be hungry for something. It's a fucking parasitic paradigm. It's crap. And you don't want to admit that truth. And I'm just saying that's where you're limiting your transcendence. Transcend your your bigotry, transcend your myopic, narrow mind and step a little bit above the game and realize it's a game that's made of shit, consumption, reproduction for the sake of replicating a molecule. All right, well, anyway. So the other thing he said here, which was really just, just, just disgusting, somehow reductionism implies nihilism. And you just say how so? How 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 exactly is taking something apart, seeing how how its parts were made, and then seeing how its functions? How does that in all in any way make you incapable of recognizing it as valuable or meaningful or substantive? It doesn't do any of those things. Not at all. Reduction is what is that? And what is the alternative to reductionism? What is the alternative besides God <clears throat> to um, dissecting it, seeing what it's made of? and understanding how it works. <clears throat> What's the alternative? Explain to me. Show me the alternative way of rationally understanding something besides dissection. This is just idiotic. You don't have a rational alternative except for fairy stories. Make up a better story. So we're right back to that crap. Um, and so, yeah, it's just such a joke for him to tell me I'm obligated to be a value nihilist when he's the value nihilist. There's nothing in my philosophy that denies me the ability to see or recognize that sentient creatures feel and that feelings are highly important. Where in nihilism, where in reductionism, where in my naturalism am I obliged not to recognize that? It's just such a lie. It's such a pile of crap. It's based on absolutely nothing. You're the one claiming you're the nihilist. You're the value nihilist, not me. 
You're the one that's saying you somehow have an authority or a right to torture animals. I can recognize that there's a value problem there. Again, so you're the you're the nihilist asshole, and you're the one not transcending your own bigotry. You know, so fuck you and this nonsense. I, mean, I really want to play these video and just because I want to show you each one of his his crackpot statements and say, see, this is it. Look, listen to this shit. Just one after another of of pie in the sky, phantasmagorical fairy dust. Nature is evolving into something. What do you think it's going to evolve into? For four billion, well, for five hundred million years, or a billion years anyway, it's made trilobites and sea monsters and tyrannosauruses and great white sharks. That's what nature makes, shithead. There's no, there's no transcending the model. Ah, this is so stupid. The function, okay? The, the, you can't fix the function. That's the whole point. It's a desire machine. That's all it is. You want to you want to arbitrarily change what it desires because okay, you'll make it, you'll tr you'll you'll transhuman yourself into robots, and then you'll desire to what? Play the hokey pokey and then jizz all around. Is that what you're gonna do? You're gonna hokey pokey and then jizz all around, and then say you're something. No, you're a joke. You're a fucking laughing stock. That's what you are. Fucking asshole. Alright, yeah, it's time to say fuck this shit. Alright, so I didn't get very far. So he's he's basically saying, look, the only two choices are nihilism and transcendence. And I'm arguing, of course, that there's this really easy, simple choice of yeah, let's go with the fail safe thing. Um, you know, the value neutral, fail safe, no risk really. The Benatar solution is obvious. I mean, shit. The Martians don't miss being Martians, and there's none of them suffering. So, win all the way around. And we should become like the Martians. Um, so, really, it's a choice between fail safe and squandering suffering. Or worse, in my opinion. It's malicious and sadistic. So, this isn't just a waste of suffering. These people are sadistic, selfish, motherfucking cunts. So anyway, um, so now he's going to call it a naturalistic fallacy to believe that uh, discomfort bad, comfort good. Now, uh, this is where the argument's going to end, right? Because there's, there's, there's no point in just, there's, there's no debate. I'm sorry. This one, I have personally visited this Martian. I've personally, I've done it, okay? I've got evidence, right? Oh, I just, oh, ow, ow. Yeah, I have evidence right here with me, okay? You're not going to be able to make that argument to me. It's an impossible, idiotic argument to call it any kind of fallacy for me to recognize that I'm a sensate organism and that those sense and to recognize the fact that those sensations have distinctly different qualities of horribly obnoxious, which is bad, and not obnoxious or pleasurable, which is good. There's no nothing you could possibly say could possibly change my 50 years experience as a sentient organism. You just can't undo the intrinsic, intrinsic, inherent quality of sensation. I've experienced it, shithead. How, how, how are you going to argue me out of the realization that I know that if I shove this pen slowly into my head that it will be an, a horrible experience? You can't, there's no, have no hope. This is idiotic. So if I can't get concession on that subject, fuck this. This is too, this is, this guy's too stupid. He should be in a fucking laboratory and he should get what the average little white mice gets. Alright, he, he should be boiled in his own bullshit and have his skin slowly peeled off. Alright, um, let's talk a bit about morality now, a bit more about morality. Says. Yeah, well, I don't know how you could miss in those four parts where I said, I don't want to talk about morality, I want to talk about value ethics, right? I only said it, like, how many times in those four parts of videos? So this is your paraphrase again, right? So you can't really listen correctly, ever. I made a whole spiel about how I don't like the word moral, I don't use the word moral, and there you go. Put it in my mouth anyway, right, fuckhead? Yeah, that's character and integrity. Fuck you. Um, more, I think, in his dialogue with uh, Corey Anton, who was the person he was talking with in the video I talked about in my last video. I don't think he says this so much in this four-part response, but he says uh, in some other videos, at least, 
that um, right and wrong, or pleasure and pain, are inherently valuable. Pain is inherently bad, and pleasure is inherently good. Just not so. That's a naturalistic fallacy. Not until you heard that, right? I mean, is there really any point in talking to people who don't understand that, like, in war, the horror is, is that, you know, people get shot and they slowly die on the battlefield, or two weeks, like in the Civil War, two weeks later, after they've had their legs sawed off and all this other horror happening to them, and we can all appreciate that I would pay a zillion dollars not to be that poor slob? Is that, is, is somebody can't figure out that that's where the value is? Fucking A. Inherently good or bad. No, although these value judgments are subjective. As well, again, subjective. Like whether you like vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream, you can, you can like pain and suffering imposed on things, or you can dislike it. And either either way of looking at it, it's perfectly reasonable. If you think it's reasonable that all the darkies should be tortured, then that's perfectly reasonable. Because it's subjective. There's no rational standard to be viewing this in, like you wouldn't like to be boiled in oil, so you really don't have a right to boil somebody else in oil. No, let's not be rational. Let's not go by the, the facts I've already gleaned from the reality. Somehow I'm supposed to be a liar now and be able to say it's okay to impose on something else what I wouldn't want imposed on me. No, that's not okay. David Hume pointed out, the philosopher David Hume, if you sort of observe, let's say, an act of murder, um, so someone, you know, is taking a knife... You know, you're really dumb. Because if you're going to do this, you should do... Go, you should say act of murder in some way where the murder, the victim, isn't going to be some sort of victim, okay? So you're using a really bad example. So, if, I mean, you said something like if you snuck up behind somebody and, you know, knocked them in the head with a, you know, a forty-five, and, you know, they're gone instantly, uh, you know, most of their head's gone. Um, yeah, hard to find the crime. But, yeah, no, knife to death? If it's stabbing someone else, you will not find the badness in that act. Right, so I can't figure out that I wouldn't want to be stabbed. That I wouldn't want to have a knife shoved inside of me and feel the pain of the knife stabbing me. And then multiple stabs where, you know, it start, pokes holes in me. And I wouldn't, I can't figure out that I wouldn't want to be stabbed to death. Somehow, I can't, I can't, I have no clue. I, I, rationally, I can't figure it out. As a sentient organism who's experienced sentient discomfort and pain and suffering, I can't figure out that I wouldn't want to be stabbed. I mean, you really are amazing. Uh. You'll just see the facts, the physical events. You, you will not see the badness in it. It's not inherently... <clears throat> Again, that's only if you're not been informed by sentience. Okay, you'd have to be um, some kind of device that has no understanding of what it is to feel pain. That's the only way you could possibly not react to the circumstance as realizing I'd much rather be that guy than that guy. You're too stupid. Right or wrong, inherently good or bad. That's a naturalistic fallacy. All right, well, that's just too stupid, right? So we'll just end here, right? Is that stu there's, no, there's no point in me wasting time on people who can't even figure out that pain is bad and comfort is good. I mean, they can't even figure that out. What? What, what? what am I supposed to do with something like that? I mean, it's too stupid. It's too stupid. And he's talking about transcending. What have you transcended? You can't figure out that pain is bad. What have you transcended? That's just as dumb and stupid as thing as I could possibly imagine. I don't know how I could possibly. I can't think of anything I could destroy in my brain to make me dumber than not realizing that pain is bad. I mean, <laughs> that's like the, you know, you, you you couldn't hit a a, a, a more a more uh, uh, necessary nerve. So anyway, so goodbye. You're retarded.